Hi, uh, I'm J.R. Lowry. Uh, we are undoubtedly in the middle of a huge change going on in asset management. Uh, and while change is constant, what's making it feel particularly disruptive right now is that it's coming from all sides. And to some extent, the asset management industry is really caught in between two ends of, of where change is really coming from. One, in the capital markets, and two, uh, in the ways that consumers are thinking about their financial futures. So today, the, the, to make it easy, I came up with a simple framework, four Ds, uh, that I'm gonna talk about today that relate to disruption. Uh, digitization, de-risking, uh, disintermediation, and democratization. So, digitization. Obviously, given the interest in, uh, in this topic, we have a big crowd here today. Uh, and, and to me, having lived through the, having lived through the dot com era, uh, it feels a little frothy just like it did then. Uh, but hype aside, there's unquestionably real change going on. What I sometimes like to think of as the quiet revolution going on beneath, beneath the froth. Uh, the digitization that's going on right now is going to affect the asset management industry in a number of ways. Most importantly though, it's going to produce a lot more data and it's going to make that data available more quickly. And while we talk a lot about the exponential increase in the volume of data and how you know, half of the world's data and history came in the last 12 to 18 months, what really matters more to the asset management industry is the variety of data. So the Internet of Things and all those connected devices that the Internet of Things creates is going to produce a lot more data. And all of that data becomes an opportunity and a challenge if you're an investment manager because you have to figure out how to get investable insight out of that data. And it's going to be harder and harder and harder with all of these different types of data and the volume to separate the signal from the noise. That's going to require investment managers to look at new analytic techniques. And we see some of them represented in the groups today. News analytics, sentiment analytics, other forms of text analytics, behavioral analytics. Uh, we're demonstrating or talking about a couple of, of tools like that uh, at our stand, which is in the back. And again, you're going to need to ingest this data to figure out where the investable insight is from this data and to have at your power the computing capability, whether you're getting that in the cloud or investing in it yourself, to be able to figure out what does all of this data mean for me. And that data ends up as a result being both a driver of new business models and also an outcome of business models. Second thing, de-risking. I would argue, I know we're at more of a tech-focused conference, I think this is actually the one that's going to have the most impact on the industry. We're seeing unprecedented levels of regulation right now in the capital markets. And what it's forcing is it's forcing the banks to completely change their business models. Capital requirements are making some, uh, and stress testing requirements, are making some businesses that banks have been in un infeasible. They can't stay in them. They're too capital inefficient. Cost increases in other businesses, for example, how much margin you have to put down to make a derivatives trade, uh, is also changing what's used where. Uh, and while everybody likes to badmouth the speculation that goes on in the capital markets, if you're a pension fund and you're trying to hedge interest rate risk, the fact that that's now getting more expensive for you, that's not a good thing and not a good thing ultimately for the end investor. So all of these changes from a de-risking standpoint have the uh, power to both increase regulatory costs uh, and also re increase capital uh, requirements that are going to change how balance sheets used. Third thing, disintermediation. There are a lot of middlemen in this industry. Uh, and in the scheme of things, I think we're going to see a collapsing down of that intermediary role. Perhaps a re-intermediation as well, but more, we're going to see models that previously had two principals on a buy and sell transaction uh, with two agents who represented them coming to an exchange or clearinghouse, five parties. Five parties will go to three, three parties will go to two. This is crowdfunding, this is peer-to-peer -peer lending. Blockchain will only further increase the extent to which that happens. And so, if you're in one of these businesses that has depended on the kind of old school form of, of being an intermediary, there's big change coming into play there. Fourth is democratization. Around the world, led by the US, now going on in the UK and coming in other markets, is a gigantic shift from defined benefit pension models to defined contribution models where you're kind of in it for yourself, right? And with that is coming a shift from institutional investment management to retail investment management. 
And so all of this is driving lots of new focus on the end consumer. You see it in the robo-platforms. You see it in banks talking about direct-to-consumer plays, asset managers realizing that you know, they don't want to just be a fund manufacturer or wholesaler anymore. They actually want to have that direct consumer relationship. But with that is coming more power to the end investor. Some of the new regulations that are coming in require more fee transparency. They require you to demonstrate that the product that you're recommending for that client is actually appropriate for them. And that's going to lead to a shift in products and also a, lead, a, a shift more to individual managers having to do more for themselves, a self-directed, self-service model. Just like what happened in the, you know, the, the travel industry, we all now use you know, online tools, we don't use travel agents anymore. And there's good and there's bad with that. It's good if you're confident in what you're doing, it's not so good if you're not. And even on the institutional side, we'll see more of those things happening uh, as they pull more of their asset management in-house, in uh, and they also reduce the number of asset managers they're working with. So, this is going to drive a lot of change in the industry. It's going to create a new set of power brokers, particularly those who have technology-centric, data-centric business models. It makes platform plays more relevant and more important. It's leading to a battle for the desktop. It's leading to a battle for the best user experience. But in the end, it's really leading to a battle for the customer. And to me, that's why the tech firms like the Apples and the Googles and the Alibabas are all looking at financial services right now because they have a lot of customer relationships. And that is probably going to help them make at least some foray into asset management. The industry itself, it's going to get tougher. There's a lot of margin, a lot of profit, a lot of salary. Uh, all of that will come, you know, will come down. The strong will play better. Uh, and I think these four Ds will help shape who the winners are in the future. Thank you.